Hi guys, so I went charity shopping in Tamworth and I got some more stuff. I guess I'll start with the vinyls. Uh, I've actually put one of them away already, which is uh, Chic, say Chic, uh, which I think I'm going to sell because it's worth about £10. And then I also got the Fabulous 50s, and this is like a 9 or 10 vinyl box set uh, with like a vinyl for each decade. So we've got like 1950, Frankie Lane and stuff like that. So that's cool. Uh, then I got Wham! Make It Big. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Wings Greatest. The Bangles, A Different Light. And Neil Diamond, I'm glad you're here with me tonight. Also, when I got back, I found that this had been delivered in the post. And I believe I know what this is. I believe this was sent to me by the one and only Charles Heathcote. And it is a copy of Doris Ahoy, his new Doris novella, which I'm very excited to get to. I'll probably get to this next. I'm just going to finish my Stephen King book and then I'll get to that. And uh, in return, I'm going to be sending him a copy of my book, No Rest for the Wicked. So this is the second time actually now I think we've done little book exchanges. Okay, and then I've got some books. So uh, I'll start with this one. So I'll start with this one. This one was given to me by my mum. This is Michael Smith, The Secrets of Station X, How Bletchley Park Helped Win the War. And I'm actually reading Alan Turing's biography at the moment. And I'm really inter interested in all that kind of stuff. And we're actually going to go to Bletchley Park at some point. So looking forward to reading that. And then from the charity shops, I picked up Framed by Ronnie O'Sullivan. So Ronnie O'Sullivan is a snooker player. I'm pretty sure this is actually ghost written, you know, but but anyway, that would be cool. Especially because I've been getting more interested in snooker recently as well. Here we have Roald Dahl, over to you. So these are like some stories of his time as a wartime fighter pilot. Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Cranor. Basically people have talked about this a lot. I think some people listen to the podcast and whatnot. I actually saw the reviews of this are not so good, so I'm not particularly keen to get to it, but hey-ho. Uh, then I got The Lie Tree by Francis Hardinge. Again, just one that I've heard a lot about through Booktube. The Hunger Games Mockingjay uh, by Suzanne Collins. Now, annoyingly, I don't have book two. So I've read book one, and this is book three. But I don't have book two yet, anyway. It will, it will be coming soon. And then Time's Eye by Arthur C. Clarke and Stephen Baxter. So I recently read the books that Stephen Baxter co-wrote with Terry Pratchett, and they were great. And obviously Arthur C. Clarke is a sci-fi legend. So, uh, yeah, and I was impressed with what I read of Stephen Baxter. I think I'm actually going to try and read the rest of his stuff. I also want to quickly show you this little lot. These are all going up on my eBay store, which I'll link to below. Uh, probably for like £2.49 each, £2.49, which is like $3. But I bought all these for, it was two for a pound on each of these. And I thought, basically, I'll buy them all because I can probably make a bit of money on them. And... Um, these are all published by Titan Books, and they're all Simpsons comics. So we have Beach Blanket Bongo, Simpsons Comics Confidential, Simpsons Comics Belly Buster, uh, Bart Simpson Class Clown, Simpsons Comic Comics Big Bonanza. Bart Simpson Son of Homer. Simpsons Comics and Madness. Uh, Simpsons Comics Strike Back. And Simpsons Comics Supernova. So yeah, basically I'm going to put these up in my uh, eBay store and I'll link them below. Uh, link to that below in case you want to check them out. But um, if, I don't, if these don't sell as well, I will quite happily read them myself, you know. Hello, I have this parcel, which I think is a book. I'm not even sure. I don't know. Is it a book? So these are from Isabel Kenyon from Fly on the Wall Press. So I asked for copies of um, some of the other chat books that she's publishing in this series. So I've already reviewed one which I'll link to below. The name of which I can't currently remember. I'm very sorry. Uh, I've seen if it was on my recent uploads there. But uh, these are, here we have Bad Mommy Stay Mommy by Elizabeth Horan. Uh, Bethany Rivers, The Sea Refuses No River. And Anne Walsh Donnelly, The Woman with an Owl Tattoo. And these are all just six ninety nine each, little chat books. Let's read you one from Bad Mommy Stay Mommy, just at random here. Just to, you know, see if you like the kind of stuff that they're publishing there. 
I really do. Spoiler alert. Turn of the screw. Governor, so oh governess, see how the children cry in your sight. See little Miles in the torchlight. At Bly, bucolic Bly, uncle blessed with tight thighs. Success, you unkempt immature mess. See the mirror, see the boat, feel their sex rocking back and forth. The lake swallows, sperm sent from the past. At best, it's church, it's a school day, it's peekaboo at yourself. In the cloak, enrage death, engage the ire, frighten a little. People to death, the small, terrifying, penile id. The biggest thing you know, ghosts roll, plays the ego. Clitoris, round about, becomes the mother's fascination. But if no one's left, then who will be teaching? If no father, who is left to make the haunting? Yeah, I don't know how to read poetry really. We were taught in uni certain tricks that I kind of try and put into it, but also I just read it how, I don't know, how I would punctuate it myself. I, don't, I think it's a poetry thing, like if you write poetry, you just read other poetry the way you would have, like the way it would be read if you'd written it, if that makes sense. But yeah, looking forward to sharing these. All right guys, I have some parcels. Uh, so this one is one I've ordered from Amazon. What did I order? I, I, it came to my like monthly time to treat myself to some new books, you see. Alright, so here we have Ollie Jacobs, Wrapped Up in Nothing, a Mr. Blank story. So it's no secret that I am a fan of Ollie Jacobs. These are actually both indie books. So here we also have Gay Zombie Sluts in Key West by Mandy DeSandra. So... <laughs> A bizarro erotica novel, which I'll probably read next. I'm quite excited about that. Okay, uh, then we have a package here, and this is from Time for Books here on BookTube, uh, one of my favourite channels. I mean, well, we've been friends for years, well, a couple years now, since we met, really. And this is what she sent me. She has sent me Paroxysm of Fear by Todd Wittenmeyer. So, Todd, as in our uh, Todd the Librarian here on BookTube. Uh, and we, we also have Ask Goblins of Auschwitz by Cameron Pierce, which is a bizarro novel as well by Eraserhead Press. So it's weird that she decided to send me a bizarro novel when I'd already got one coming as well, which she, did, she didn't know about, but a little card here. Hello, Dane. I hope that you're well. I'm also sorry for this having taken so long. I thought it might be to send you a book expected and a surprise. An utterly silly one at that. I got sent... <laughs> what? She got sent it on accident and know no one else who would get the same laughs from it. That is a hell of a book to be sent by accident, isn't it? Ask Gob Goblins of Auschwitz. I mean, if I put a photo up with just these books, people are going to think I'm so strange. Then this is from Charles Heathcote here on BookTube. Uh, he, he just had these books go in spare I guess oh thank you by the way time for books Emily thank you um, yeah Charlie messaged me well we got chatting because he saw I'd read Murakami read some Murakami and he messaged me to say he had one that he had like no immediate plans of reading or whatever and asked if I'd like it so he sent me colorless Tsukuru Tazaki and his years of pilgrimage which I don't think I've even heard of before I must have heard of it because it'll be on my wish list. Um, but yeah, so he sent me this. And then he also sent me The Outsider by Stephen King, which he didn't tell me he was sending. But I'm very glad that he did because it, I don't have it. Uh, and I believe this has got Holly Gibney in it as well. Yeah, I'm quite stoked about this one. Thank you, Charlie. Well, thank you for both of them. And then we have this package here, which is from Heady Mix Diverse Stories for Curious Minds. However... The way I'm going to do this, I'm doing a separate unboxing for this. But to save time, I'm going to film the un full unboxing now. And then we will just uh, sort of import various bits of me looking at the books. So yeah. Ishmael and his sisters by Louise Stern tells the story of Ishmael, Rosie and Christina, who are deaf like many in the rural Mexican Maya village in which they live. The deaf and hearing all communicate in sign language, which is reminiscent of the deaf community in Martha's Vineyard. Louise, who is fourth generation deaf on her father's side and third generation on her mother's, grew up thinking about the utopia of Martha's Vineyard. It seemed an almost mythical place and one in which her father talked about with his friends, saying that they should set up a town like that. 
Louise is also influenced by her travels in Mexico, which is where she wrote the novel and discovered surfing, romance, the village children, Toritas, Victoria, a hammock, and sunsets over the beach. Ishmael and Sisters is a heady read, with sign language expressed at pace in a rhythmical way, words missing to show the grammatical differences between sign language and written English. It can appear confusing and difficult to succumb to Louise's writing, her prose immersive and almost theatrical in its delivery. But it is a rewarding read, and Louise's exploration of communication and language is one that we are privileged to experience. Being Greta by Maxine Sinclair is a book and genre I wouldn't normally go for, and there are parts of the book that remind me why. But I'm denied for quite a while and eventually decided that even though this might not be the kind of book I'd normally recommend, Greta's story is one that should be shared more widely. Maxine is a British Sign Language interpreter and she also has a deaf husband, so the setup in Greta's story is one that you can easily see Maxine being exposed to. What I liked about the book is that Greta is just an average young woman with average young woman issues, things that we can all relate to having experienced or know someone who has. This is a familiar story in many senses, but with one difference, Greta is deaf. As such, the story becomes more about identity, how Greta deals with isolation, and how she navigates through the two worlds of deaf and hearing and the relationships she forms around her. Loud Silence features various authors and is curated by Hedy Mix. Details about this and its writers are in the book's introduction. I got a little summon summon in the mail. Uh, don't mind the mess down here, we have like a pack of our Oreos here. What's that? Is that Pillow? That's Pillow, okay. So this is Isaac Asimov, Asimov's Mysteries. I actually bought this book to replace a copy of it. This was a bedtime book, but I'm going to switch it out and have it as my main book. So I'm already halfway through it, which helps. So I'm going to finish Wrapped Up in Nothing, and then I'm going to read me Asimov. Alright, I'm somehow already on low battery. So I don't have the backdrop behind me today, because all the lighting, because it's five past 11, but I've got these two books in the post today that I really want to open up. So here we have Beer Makes Daddy Strong and Other Lies to Tell Small Kids by Andy Riley. Uh, so for example, The Wii, Daddy bought it for the kids. 800 pounds for a handbag, Daddy will never understand that. Speed cameras, Daddy's got some opinions. Uh, I'm already feeling this isn't very entertaining to be honest, but I'm gonna give it a read anyway. It's one of those little kind of gift shop books really. But this is by the guy who wrote the, or well, who made the Bunny Suicide books. And I quite enjoyed those. And to be honest also, I'm trying to reduce the number of books on my TBR. And I figure the best way to do that is that when I can like, so every month I buy myself a certain number of books and I was like, if I deliberately buy books like this, I can whiz through them. And they're on my wish list, you know. But I also picked up All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is um, definitely not a small book, but not too long actually, about 500 pages. People seem to either love or hate this one. I'm, I'm hoping I like it because I know it's set during the war and I think a lot of people who don't like this don't like it because they don't like books set during the war. So, you know, I, I do. So hopefully I'll enjoy this. But having said that, like the book thief, I theoretically I should have enjoyed that and I did not. So, I mean, it won the Pulitzer Prize, which means absolutely nothing to me. In fact, if anything, that that kind of weighs against it because I don't trust prizes. <laughs> I never agree with who wins them. So, I'm sure I just saw like a table or an. Oh no, okay. So I just seen this through a couple of pages, and I was like, I thought I'd seen like a a photo or a table or something, but. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that actually, so soon. Hello, I am hungover today, it was a good weekend. Um, but yes, when I was going on a little uh, rum run to Asda to get some, no to Tesco to get some run, uh, rum, they have a book exchange. So I picked up this edition of, why is it it's trying to focus on my chest hair? So yeah, I picked up this copy of Haunted by Chuck Paulinick from the book exchange. Very excited, uh, even though a little bit annoyed because I am trying to cut down on my TBR list. But hey ho, I saw it and it was 50p, so I got it. Also, this came from uh, Blackwell's Books in in Oxford. Well, actually, I guess it comes from oh, it comes from their unit in Gloucester, so that's not quite as exciting. But Blackwell's Books is quite a well-known bookstore in Oxford, which somehow I've never been into, despite the fact that my ex-girlfriend lived in Oxford. And I've been to Oxford before then as well. I mean, look, it's got a little crest on the back. But um, the reason I didn't go in is simple. It's because I can't afford to shop at bookshops like that, you know? That's why I get most of my books in charity shops. This is one that I ordered online, however. Uh, and it is a graphic novel, so I didn't mind spending a little bit more. Oh, look at that. 
The graphic novel that inspired the film, which I haven't seen, but Snowpiercer, number one, The Escape. Dystopian sci-fi at its best, one of the greatest science fiction comics ever created. Cursing through an eternal winter on an icy track wrapped around the frozen planet Earth, there travels a train that never stops. This is Snowpiercer, 1001 carriages long. From fearsome engine to final car, all surviving human life is here, a complete hierarchy of the society we lost. The elite, as ever, travel in luxury at the front of the train, but for those in the rear coaches, life is squalid, miserable and short. Proloff is a refugee from the tale, determined never to go back. In his journey forward through the train, he hopes to reach the mythical engine and, perhaps, find some hope for the future. So I guess you can see why, uh, why I thought this would be an interesting one. Okay, so I got a thing in the post today that... So I opened this up because I didn't know what it was and I now know what it is. It's, um, it's because it was quite a big package here. And I'd had this chat and one of my indie friends said he might send me one of his books. Uh, but it was like his new book and it was book three, I think, in a series. So I said, well, I need to read the first ones first. So can you just send me the first one? Um, and I guess he sent me all three that are out now. Uh, shout out to Cats and Camera as well, because she's read this author before. These are the Golden One series by Hans M. Hershey. So we have the Golden One Reckoning, the Golden One Deceit, and the Golden One Blooming. So, okay, so yeah, this is an exciting new fantasy trilogy dealing with urgent topics affecting humanity today. Okay, I'm going free-handed for this one with no built-in, with just a built-in mic on the camera. You will have to forgive me. Uh, I've just got one last thing. This is issue one of Creature. It's just a local zine that uh, was at, on sale at the art centre, so I picked it up. It's got some pretty cool illustrations in it and stuff. Uh, actually, the bulk of it is dedicated to an interview with uh, MCM, who was in uh, a group called Caveman, an old hip-hop group. So that's quite cool. Uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful little you know, little thing, little artifact. So I've already read it, but yeah, it was it was cool. But other than that, it is the end of the month, so I'm gonna love you and leave you all. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to buddy read any of these books. Some of them I have already read, so sorry about that. Uh, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.